Chris here. This is Chris Petrie. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. I'm so grateful that you come by every week, every month, month after month, year after year. We're doing watercolors together. We're learning. We're getting better at our watercolors. We're learning all about the methods and techniques of watercolor. And uh, in this painting, it's going to be no different. We're going to cover all the fundamentals, all the basics of how to create this painting. And uh, again, we always say repetition is the mother of skill. So even if you're not so happy about painting a winter scene with a house and trees and things like this, even if you just watch the video, you'll see all the different techniques that we're using, the methods that we're using in watercolor. They're going to make you a better watercolor artist. So please tune in every week, watch every video we create here on my channel, and you'll constantly learn all of the same things over and over that we use, the methods, the techniques, the same colors, the same palettes of colors, the same methods, the techniques, the brushwork, all the things you need to know, they're here on each of my videos. So don't um, worry about having to create a great watercolor every time you paint. Just remember that the more you learn the fundamentals, the better off you're going to be. So. If you subscribe below on the right hand side by hitting the subscribe button, you'll see each of these paintings that we do every week. You'll be able to follow along if you're watching and just taking in and soaking in the information. That's perfect. That's what you want to do. And if you want to join along and paint with us too, well then you're going to do that as well. But th the essentials are all of the methods and techniques of watercolor on my channel I'm teaching are all the same no matter what I'm doing. If I'm doing a winter scene or a shore scene with ocean water and tropical palm trees, or if I'm doing figures, or if I'm doing a cityscape with buildings. No matter what I'm painting, I'm always covering the fundamentals and basics of watercolor that are going to get you to the next level. So I want you to have great paintings, have fun with your watercolors, and not get uh, you know, discouraged about giving up on it because you aren't making progress. You'll always make progress if you're just watching each week along as we go. And so this here painting, you're, we're going to create this, we're going to show how you draw this in pencil. We're going to show how you use this basic technique here of planning your design before you start your drawing so that you can lay out the di different points on your rectangle that you're working within to get your design of your painting. And here we used a Z design, which is basically an S across. We cover this, how you do it, how you lay it all out with waypoints along your vertical and horizontal um, points on your rectangle. And then here you can see it works out perfect. We have the, the design of the... So you have that beautiful angle, the angle across, the angle across this way, and the angle of course this way in the sky. This is a beautiful design principle. We're going to cover everything here. So grab your art gear or if you just want to watch and you're not so much interested in painting or drawing it, at least you're watching and seeing what we're doing and learning all the methods and all the techniques that we use to accomplish this beautiful painting. So strap in and we'll be back in just a second and we'll start drawing this and covering all the information you need. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, welcome everybody. Again, uh, we're just starting up, uh, starting our actual sketch and drawing now. You saw the finished painting uh, right in the beginning of this video, so we're just going to begin our um, layout and our design work for our drawing for this painting. And um, I just uh, wanted to um, cover the few things we'll do bef bef as we start our sketch, and. Um, First thing we'd like to do is I have a piece of Buckingford uh, paper. Um, I've I bought Buckingford paper a while ago, maybe a year ago. I bought maybe like 10, 10 sheets of it, like large full sheets. So I have that in my uh, stock in my studio. And every once in a while I'll go into my uh, studio uh, drawers. I have large drawers with the paper in there. And I just take out some sheets of paper and I start trimming them down to smaller pieces like this. So I might take a full sheet and just trim it down to like four pieces. So that's what I did with this Buckingford. I like to have different papers on hand just to try them out, but I mostly use Fabriano and Arches. 
but Buckingford's a really good paper too. A lot of artists love that, especially in the uh, England and Europe. Buckingford's more, a really popular uh, brand of paper over there. So I just tr traced the out outline of my tape. So this is a rectangle. So we're working with a landscape uh, type uh, design here, which where the paper is going a long ways this way. So our rectangle is uh, horizontal versus if we were to do a portrait style, kind of like the same thing when you're doing printing and you're uh, on your printer uh, at home or in the office, it asks you if you want to print your paper landscape or portrait style. We're doing the landscape style, which is more uh, horizontal, the layout. And um, we're going to do a landscape here. Of course, you saw the painting, a beautiful winter scene with a house and some gorgeous, beautiful sky and snow. And this is a real fun painting to do. And we're in the winter seasons now in our, uh, in the United States for the Northeast United States. So this is what we have. And we're going to do our layout of our design. So we're going to, this design is basically going to be, I'll just take a small piece of paper here and we'll just kind of look at the design from just a simple standpoint of the design of this painting is going to be about two-thirds up over here. So if you have one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds here, or you can go the opposite way, it doesn't matter, but just we're looking at thirds. So the top third is going to be the start of the sky over on this side of the painting. And it's going to pretty much go across the painting like that. This, this, the uh, distant horizon line where the mountains are and the sky is up here. So this is going to be the sky up here. And this is going to be the mountains in the distance. And then we're going to have a house over here. About, about three quarters of the way. So if you have quarters up here, one quarter, two quarters, half, three quarters, and then one inch, like if you're breaking it into an inch scale, quarter inch, half inch, so you could say this is half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch if you're just using a scale like this, if we were saying this is a scale here, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, and you can use metric if you want to and just break it down the same way, but you're just looking for quarter divisions up here and third divisions up here. So like three, six, nine, and then, um, you know, you could go four, eight, 12, 16 up top for millimeters or the metric system. And, and, and then we have, so this is the basic design, the two thirds on the, this side of the scale two-thirds is the sky up here and the distant mountains and the house here there's gonna be a house here in the scene beautiful little house in this wintry kind of a beautiful country scene maybe a country house here in the farmlands and then we have here we're gonna do um, we're gonna do our snow like this a snowy hill along the house and then we're going to have our road here so there's a, a bit of a road here along this scene here kind of leading us into the scene so we have a road in here leading us into the scene where the house is and we have our house here with some windows and doors looks wonderful chimney up top over here so you can kind of see we have a house, that's the focal point here, um, sort of in the, if you're breaking it down into a four quarters, you know, the house is sort of right around that top section, a little bit maybe lower, but and you can kind of see the design of it. So it's kind of like a, a Z design here like this, or a Z like this. So you can kind of see that leads your eye in, the road leads your eye into the painting. Then you go up here into the hills, and then you go across the horizon line where the distant mountains are and the distant sky. So that's going to be the layout of our painting. And then we're just going to take this same layout and we'll do it on our paper. So I wanted to go over it first here so you kind of have 
I guess you can think about it first and kind of do it in a smaller scale or think about it as I'm doing this here, like sort of like a, you know, a preliminary uh, go or a preliminary try at it to kind of see how we're laying out our painting. And then we're just going to do this exact same thing on our larger paper. So let's do that. And um, we just remember, we, if you want, you know, you, you make one of these first, then you take this and you just kind of refer back to your painting and say, okay, all right, we talked about thirds. So we have thirds here, one third, two thirds, three thirds, approximate, you don't have to be exact. So this is about one third, one th so one third, two thirds, three thirds, like that. I'll make it a little darker here. I think my lights are pretty bright. So you have one third here, two thirds up here, and this is the top of the painting up here. And that's the same thing as we have here. One third, two thirds, and three thirds to the top. Then up here, we're gonna do quarters, which means we'll go halfway. So this is about halfway on the paper. You can measure it with a ruler or you can do it by eye approximately. Approximately usually works good, but if you're just starting out, you you know, most of you are probably have a lot of experience, so you kind of have a feel for halves and quarters and so forth, you know. But it's okay if you're just beginning in the watercolor, then you would just take a little more time, maybe measure it and say, okay, that's uh, 12 inches, this would be 6 inches, and then we do 3 inches, 6 inches, 9 inches, 12 inches. And then you have your quarters. So we'll just say 1 quarter one quarter or you could you know break it into inches and just say let's measure it ourselves here let's take a look I'll, I'll take my ruler and say all right how long is this paper this paper is about 12 inches it's a 13 inches but let's make it just to make for easier let's say this is 12 inches so yeah we'd go three inches six inches here three inches here nine inches here and 12 inches here and then you have it so then you'll have your quarters you'll have your top of your painting broken down into quarter divisions one quarter two quarter three quarters four quarters and you have your side your vertical so this is your vertical um, the vertical of your rectangle is here vertical is thirds one third two thirds three thirds and then your horizontal along your uh, rectangle is 3 inches, 6 inches, 9 inches, 12 inches. Or 1 quarter, 2 quarter, 3 quarters, 4 quarters. And that's really, that's how basic it is. And that's our depiction of it here in a smaller form. And if you create one of these small cards like this, I just use a piece of watercolor paper. It's a little thick, it's nice, you can leave this and you can have this, you stash this in a folder in your studio and then you always have it. If you want to break your painting down in thirds and quarters like this, this is a design principle. This, a lot of artists use this design principle, thirds and quarters across the top on your horizontal. So you can save this and say when the next time you're painting anything you want to, let's say a landscape painting or a seascape or a cityscape, you can just use this. You can use your card and say, oh, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to break it down into thirds on my vertical and across my horizontal, I'm going to break it down into quarters. You can do thirds across two on the top, or you can break it down quarters on the side and thirds across the top. It's up to you, but this is a really good, kind of just good formula for having a good solid design in your painting where things are going to be sort of in a really optimal area when you're creating your designs and where you're putting things in your painting. So let's start working this same design layout for this painting. So again, we talked about the one third or the top third here, we're doing our sky. So we're just going to do a light preliminary sketch across the sky, just to say this is going to be our distant mountain range and distant hills in the distance. Okay, it's very light. You can barely see it on the video. We're going to go over this darker, but first let's just get it in light. And that's the first third down, or the two thirds up, like this. That's our... Okay, now um, we're going three quarters across, like this. About three quarters, maybe a little bit left of three quarters, will be our house. And that's going to be just 
the top of the house is going to be just breaking up through the tops of the mountains. We want to break that long line here with the top of the house, the ridge of the roof. And we're going to have our chimney up here too, like that. Okay, like that. And then we're going to have a tree over here. Just lightly sketching it. Again, just to get it in. The tree's going to go all the way up through to the top of the rectangle, the top of our painting. I'm just getting in some very light indications of some branches and limbs and things like that. Okay, and uh, the tree's got a little bit of a sway to it like this from the over here. And then over here we're looking at the side of the house a little bit so we have a little bit of the side of the house with some well, there's a door over here and a window and then we have a window up here okay so I'm just getting some things laid out but we are going to go over this you know a little more in detail and I'll do a darker drawing over this I'm just sketching in the basic design of things here lightly sketching it and we're going to go over this darker so you can see it I'm just trying to get my preliminary sketch and I want you to do the same thing as you're creating your painting you want to do your preliminary sketch you, you don't want to just go in and start doing a really dark sketch because if you need to adjust something or erase something if you've done that first drawing super super dark then you're gonna have a hard time lifting up your your pencil lines with your eraser so what you do is the we always talk about this on my channel and you know everyone that comes along and follows along with me on my channel, you'll always know that I say do your preliminary sketch first, very lightly, get everything where you want it approximately, and then you go over with your darker pencil line so this way, you know, you have a darker pencil line over everything and you can see it really well as you're painting. Because sometimes if you're painting, you might lose those really light sketch lines when you're doing light preliminary drawings. So you'll definitely want to go over a second time. But you may in some instances, it's your artwork, you're the artist, you might decide, no, I don't want a dark line, pencil line in my painting. I just want to do a light preliminary sketch and leave it at that and then paint over it. Fine. That's absolutely great. If you want to do your paintings that way, again, you're the artist. You you do your paintings the way you want to do them. Sometimes, too, I, I do a darker drawing, too, because I want it to, so you can see it on the watercolor paper. So I partially do a darker drawing over my preliminary sketch or my preliminary drawing because I want you to be able to see it really clearly. Right now the lights on my my uh, video here are very bright so you might not be able to see my pencil sketch. So that's the reason why, I'll, why I will go over it with a darker pencil line. But you don't have to do that. If you get your you know your first sketch in and it looks pretty good and you have to do a little adjusting, fine. Leave it light sketches if you want. Don't Don't feel like you have to. You know, you have to make your own decisions too. You're you're the creator, so you're the creative, your creator of your designs and your paintings, and so you you do what you think is going to look best for your paintings. And then we have a little we have a, another building over here in the distance, alongside this here. doing a couple small bushes along the sides over here. This is the foreground right here, so it's closest to us. So you're going to see some of those details more, a little some twigs and branches and weeds and things like that. And this is our road. This is going to be dark over here. 
Okay, so now again, you're having a hard time seeing this, but you can kind of see probably vaguely if I turn down the brightness here, if I can. Let me see if I can turn down this a little bit. Okay, you can see a little more of the, the house. The tree here that goes up all the way here, loosely sketched. And then the road coming in here. The road is swinging into the painting, bringing our eye into the painting like this. And then we're looking at the house, the beautiful house here. Winter scenes, snow, you want to be in that house staying warm. A chimney there with some fireplace and warm, cozy fireplace. And you got your distant mountains over here. And then you have your winter sky here up in the top of the painting, the top third. So you kind of see how we did this all. And again, I'm going to go over this with a darker sketch, but first I'm going to take a break. And if you if you like this video so far and you like the way we're creating our videos here and the the watercolor methods and techniques that we're covering, please subscribe. It's really simple. You just click that button down there on the right hand side. This way you don't miss anything. We're giving you the whole chock full of nuts information here. We're giving you the whole enchilada of methods and techniques and watercolor so that no matter what we're painting, whether it's a house in the winter scene or flowers or a beautiful boat on the ocean or a, a cityscape with buildings, or a figure painting of someone sitting on a park bench and beautiful settings like that. No matter what we're doing, it's all watercolor, and it's all the same methods and techniques week after week that we're doing here. So even if you're not so happy about a painting like this, if you're watching this, you'll learn all about the design principles of how to design your paintings. You can use this design principle with any style painting. Um, you're going to learn all about how we go about um, painting this, and you can use all those painting techniques that we're going to use in this painting for any other painting that you do in watercolor. So always remember, every time you're clicking on my videos and watching my videos, you're learning the same methods and techniques over and over, but the subject matter that I'm doing might change, but the techniques and methods and all of that stays the same. So keep watching and you'll be able to apply it to whatever you like to paint. I know not everyone likes to draw and paint a winter scene with a house. Maybe, maybe a lot of you like to draw flowers and you're not so happy. You want to see more flower paintings, but I have to kind of do all the subject matter so I keep all of every everyone out there. I know you all love different kind of things to paint. So I'm doing all the different subject matter you want to see. Everyone's happy. That's that's what I do. Keep everybody happy here. And, but again, the same methods and techniques are um, are basically used for any style of painting you do, any subject matter. So it doesn't matter flowers, landscapes, seascapes, cityscapes, figure painting, portrait painting, whatever it is, you're going to use the same techniques over and over and over in the same methods. So if you click here, uh, subscribe to my channel. You'll always be watching my videos, no matter what the subject matter is. But then when your favorite one comes up and you want to paint that, well, then you paint that one. And then you're already prepped well in advance of all the methods and techniques we're going to use so that when you're doing your favorite subject matter, you're going to be able to go in there and do it confidently and do a beautiful job at your painting because you've seen over and over and over. Remember, repetition is the mother of skill. Repeating things over and over is how you build your skills. If you're not repeating things over and over and over or seeing things over and over and over, you're not going to have that repetition. That means your skills are not going to develop. So you need to develop your skill. And remember, repetition is the mother of skill. So if you want to have skill, you have to repeat things over and over and over. And that's why I do these videos, so that you can repeat these things over and over and over. Your skills will get better, your watercolors will get better, and you're going to be happy. And many of you always email me and tell me and leave in the comment section how happy you are. And I'm excited for everybody. So let's keep going. We're having a lot of fun. We're getting excited. Our watercolors are getting better. Your watercolors are getting better. And that's what it's all about. Let's get our paintings and our drawings and our overall artwork looking better. We'll feel better about our artwork and we'll be more excited to come back the next time we sit down to do a painting and a drawing and whatever we're doing with our artwork, we're going to be more happy because we're making progress. Okay, so I want you to make progress. I know I'm kind of going on here, but I want you to be happy with your watercolors and I want you to stay in it. Keep in it for the long haul. 
Remember, watercolors, it's slow and steady wins the watercolor race. It's not like you can learn watercolor in six months or a year. You got to keep working at it in just a little at a time. Keep having fun. Keep working here on our channel. I'm going to keep showing you all the stuff you need to know to keep your uh, skills and your um, your skills and your artwork going in a really good direction where you're going to have better success with it. And um, I'm sure you're already, many of you have told me you're extremely happy with your progress that you're making. So I get so many emails and so many comments saying they're very happy with their progress. Therefore, if you're just kind of new here, trust me, there's go into the comment sections and I get a lot of emails. People send me their artwork, their paintings, and they're looking absolutely incredible. Um, for a short amount of time, people send me emails of their artwork. They've only been painting like one or two years and their paintings look incredible for that amount of time. So I know what I'm teaching here is definitely working. It's definitely people, people are making way more progress than I made when I first started in watercolors. So that's how I know I'm really doing a great job helping you to get your watercolors looking beautiful. And that's all. We'll come back. We'll do our darker sketch over the top of this and then we'll start painting. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Okay, hey, we're back and we are getting started again with um, doing our darker pencil sketch. I, I remember I, I spoke about how um, doing a light sketch first is, is great. That's the way to start your painting, to get everything where you want it. And if it's a light sketch first, as we always say, you can go in and do a little bit of erasing with your kneaded eraser. And, um, and then maybe adjust something. You need to make something a little larger, a little smaller, whatever it is. Um, you know, you can adjust some things. So that's what the advantage is for doing a light preliminary sketch. I hope everyone, does that make sense? If you do a really light sketch, right? Um, you, you know, you can adjust it. You can erase a little bit, do another pencil line, kind of get things better. Versus if you go in with a dark pencil line first, then to try to adjust your drawing is going to be more difficult because then you're really not going to be able to lift up that line, that darker pencil line. So that's why we do a light pencil sketch first. So we've done that. We've done our light pencil sketch first. We went over that in detail. We went over the the little, uh, we did a small composition of our painting first, and we showed you how we used thirds, one third, two thirds, and three thirds on the sides, the vertical uh, of our rectangle. And then on the horizontal of our rectangle, we went over how we used quarters, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and then the full across. And then on the three-quarters line, we notice we put our house on the three-quarter line approximately, five-eighths, three-quarters. And then on the third line, we put our distant horizon line, where our mountains are, where it meets the sky. And then um, on the two-thirds, or the one-third line here approximately, that's where the road here, where the house is, it bends and comes back towards us. So you want to have your road in your foreground starting almost all the way over to this left side here starting your road starts here and then it swings in and then you pick up your area where your house is and then you swing that line up to your two-thirds line up here and then across so that's the, the divisions and you can see it's like a, a reverse Z so you have a reverse Z in this design which is beautiful look how beautiful that flows into the painting with this portion this line then across your eye starts to drift over this way across the beautiful snowy s landscape and you stop here and look at the house quick and then you go oh, over here wow look at that beautiful distant landscape here the dif distant mountains so we're going to paint these distant mountains how beautiful they look far away with that beautiful distant sky so that oh, this lead, this is a beautiful way to lead yourself into the painting, the road, then the hill, and then the horizon line here with the mountains and the sky coming in here too on a bit of an angle this way. And you'll see how beautiful that looks when we create, create our painting. So, But before we create our painting, let's just put this darker um, pencil line onto our paper so you can see it a little better because this light sketch is kind of difficult I know for you to see so I'm going to do go over this with a darker pencil line and if you give me just one second I just have to uh, 
sharpen up this pencil a little bit here. Well, maybe I, yeah, I'm going to sharpen this pencil up because it's a little, it's a softer lead pencil, which gives me a darker line. If I used a regular office pencil here, it's not going to get that dark line I need so you can see it. So I'm going to use this softer lead pencil here to get the darker lines in this drawing so you can see it a little better. All right, so I'll be right back in just a second. Okay, and I'm back. I just had to sharpen my pencil across the way a little bit there. I have my pencil sharpener about 10 feet away from me. Okay, so let's uh, start out. Let's get the, the road here. So the road goes in like this. Like that. Okay, that's the road. And then here's the snowbank going up. Like that. And then the distant mountains here kind of starts dark over here and you have some different and over here it goes down a little bit so there's more the uh, you'll see as we paint this there's a little darker over here there's some darker hills and landscaping and then here's more of the distant sky and mountains and up here is more of the snow banks up here light snow and then we have our sky coming across look at this some sky look at the we're gonna have some beautiful sky washes coming across this way so we just put some angles there just so we know that we're gonna putting we're gonna be putting some sky washes here and clouds on angles this way so we're doing that like this the angles this way then the mountains this way and then the snow bank along this foreground area here where there's a the snow bank here across the front of the house and then here we have the road coming in the roads going into the house like this around where the house is the driveway you have some interesting angles leading your eye through the painting that's what we want that this is a very powerful design and you can use this design in many different paintings this just happens to be a snowy winter scene with a house beautiful house and a little um, barn over here to the to the left of the of the house there's a barn over here too and there's the house here so I'm gonna just do uh, the darker pencil line so you can see okay see so we have the beautiful uh, lines of the house, the barn next door, the small barn, it's in the distance. The house is kind of closer to us here. And then this barn over here uh, to the left of the house is further uh, down the hill behind the house, so it's smaller. You can kind of see that. So that's good, like that. And then over here you have a little bit of a bush over here, like that some bushes and branches and things like that and the road is over here again all right so we have everything pretty good let's do another uh, we have to have a, a window over here another window and then another window over here too we have a window over here and then over here we have another door, and that's kind of over there. And then maybe we have some more. Maybe there's some figures over here. They're doing some things around the house here. So we have some figures too, maybe, along the side of the house. And uh, we have our tree over here. So you can see we have our tree over here, and we're going to develop our tree with our brush. So we're going to do brush strokes to get our tree in. We don't want to draw every branch and that doesn't make any sense, does it? To draw every branch with your pencil? No. You just get your tree shape basically. Okay, here's the tree trunk. Maybe there's another tree over here. So you don't want to be trying to draw in with your pencil every detail. You get the idea of things with your pencil in there. And then you paint the rest with your brush. And that'll look fine. Okay, everybody, this is perfect now. You have your basic 
the basic, again, the flow of the painting, road coming in this way, the road, then it stops here and then it swings around. You have the snowy bank here, the snow bank in front of the house and you have this gorgeous house here. That's your real focal point. And then you continue up here with your snow bank, all the snowy hills and f uh, along this area here. And then once you get up here, you go across your horizon line where your beautiful distant mountains are. And then here you're doing your beautiful sky angles with sky washes like this on angles going this way. So overall you're going into the painting, through the painting, across the mountains, back, and then with the sky like this. It gives a beautiful way for your eye to go through the painting, see everything you want to see in this painting. A absolute great design. Okay, so let's come right back and we'll start painting. All right, we're back again, and we're starting to begin to create our painting and uh, get our washes of watercolor on here. And you're going to absolutely have a fantastic time of this. Um, basically, um, once you have your pencil lines down and your design um, completed on your, your painting, you're just going to find that it's m so much easier to create a, a beautiful painting that way because everything's really done for you. Now you just have to really just have a fun time, get your washes on there, but you're not going too much with a lot of time spent on painting because really the painting process kind of goes quickly if you just get the colors in the mix correctly and you're gonna we're gonna cover all that right here right now. Okay, so let's do it. So I'm basically, again, we're, um, we covered all this stuff beforehand so we know what paper we use, we know how we did our pencil sketch. Now I'm just gonna kind of show you a few different brushes I might use. So here I'm going to use a Da Vinci Maestro round brush, Kalinsky Sable hair brush. It's a round brush. I might use this for the sky washes, the large sky washes and the road here. So I need a larger brush for that. And then maybe for more of the detail work, I might use my Da Vinci Maestro travel brush, which is a number five here. Or I might use a, a um, Raphael number six um, Kalinsky Sable round brush. And then if I wet them, if I wet my brushes, you'll see they have good points. And if I wet the, um, so these are the brushes. You can see very good points. Raphael brush here and the Kalinsky Sable here. So those are the three brushes we'll use. You can use different brushes if you want to. You might be just using beginner style brushes. Maybe you're on my, maybe you follow some of my beginner videos. For the beginners, uh, the Extreme Beginners series paintings. Well, you can do the same exact painting right here with your beginner brushes and your beginner palette. Doesn't matter. That's fine. You're, you're just working along with us. And, um, you know, if you've been painting five years or more, you might have built up your arsenal of paint brushes and palettes and you've, you know, purchased more things and you're kind of more along with studying up on palettes and brushes and what's the best to use and so forth. But you don't need a fancy palette or fancy brushes to do this painting. You can use any palette, any brushes. You're just getting this basic idea of what we're doing here. So now let's get into the painting portion of this. And again, we usually use two different styles of, uh, two different methods of painting in watercolor. We use either the a la prima method, which means basically you're doing it all at one time. At, or the glazing technique, which I use too on my channel. I've, got, I've gone over that many times on a lot of videos. The glazing technique, you would paint the whole painting over with a light wash and then go over with darker washes once it dries, the first wash. Here, we're doing the a la prima method. Does that make sense? The a la prima method. We're just going to go in here and paint this all at the same time and we're not worrying about maybe going over it with a wash and letting it dry. We're just going to paint it all one time. So. Both methods are great, and you could do this one a la prima or glazing technique. Either one works fine, whatever you're comfortable with. But for me, this one seems to be more of an a la prima type painting. So what I'll do is I'm going to start with some of the details in the house here. And that's really about it. So as I start out my house here, I'm going to go with some raw umber and cerulean blue. And I'm going to do the windows of the house here. 
And then we're going to go with some French ultramarine blue. And you can just see I'm kind of working out my colors right here on the palette. And I'm not flooding my palette with water. This is mostly actually straight paint for the most part, right? I'm not using much water at all. You can see that's mostly just paint with a tiny bit of water. And I'm going to do that and get my windows in like so. And there's another window over here. And you can see that. And we're just having fun here. That's all the main thing is having fun with our watercolors. Let's not stress about things, you know. Life is stressful. We're, when we do our artwork, that's the time we have fun. and Just enjoy our painting and drawing and have a great time and fun. Who cares what it looks like? After you paint five or ten years, your paintings are going to look 100% better. When you're starting out for your first couple of years, your paintings are not going to look that great. They're going to look good, but, you know, don't expect too much in the beginning. Just keep working at it. You'll get there. And there we go. So you can see I'm getting my dark darks first here in the house. And then if you feel like you went too dark, remember, always remember this, your painting, your painting or your paints will always dry lighter. Your paints will always dry lighter once they dry. In the beginning, they're going to look darker. When you're painting like this, it looks dark, but it's going to lighten up a little bit. So always remember that. So don't be afraid to go dark. Go darker when you're painting. And we're just working our a la prima method all at one time. We're just painting our we're painting our details of our house first. And this is sort of the house is sort of our main focal point. And there's some shadows over here on this side of this distant barn over here so we're going to put that in there and warm and cool everywhere warm and cool everywhere always try to remember warm and cool you see how i have my warm and cool here does that make sense blues and and golds blues and golds mixed in so a little bit you're doing blue a little bit you're doing gold so you have a mixture of warm and cool everywhere there's nothing more boring than just one color. If you were just to go in and start doing this and just paint everything that one color, that's that's sort of boring, right? But if you're mixing your warm and cools all the time like this, right, you're going to have a more interesting look. It's going to sort of give your paintings a more interesting feel to them. That's what you want. And then let's see now, burnt sienna. We'll do up top here, burnt sienna, burnt umber. For our chimney, and that's more of an, an interesting change here too. We got a nice, beautiful brick red for our chimney up here, and uh, that looks great. So um, we are already making good progress. Look how much progress we've already made. And there's a little bit of a some shadows over here. Like that. And another thing we always say with watercolors, you can always put you can always put lighter washes like this. Like that. You see how light that wash is? Like that. You see how that's a pretty light wash like that. You can always you can always take a light wash like that and put it into your painting on top of your white paper. But the best thing is to always leave your white paper as much as you can. Leave as much white paper as you can and then slowly add in some shadows with these lighter washes like this toward the end of the painting. So that's why I'm painting my darks first. So that's why here we're painting all of our darks first, our dark windows and doors. Over here is our door on the side of the building. And then we're going to paint. Let's start doing our trees over here. So we'll take our, we'll make a darker dark. So let's maybe over here, let's go over here. We'll make our darker darks. Burnt umber 
French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, like that. Maybe a little bit of purple, too, to mix in there. And even, well, let's just, let's stick with these colors. I think we can, maybe we're going to do a little black here. Let's see what kind of blacks we have here. Okay, that might be, yeah, that's ivory black and Payne's gray. Okay, so ivory black and Payne's gray, you can mix that in too with your trees. And let's do that. Let's get our trees in here. So now I'm just, again, my hand is right on the paper. You can see that? Boom. I'm holding my hand right on top of the watercolor paper, and I have extra a board over here. And I always say that. If you have watercolor taped down to your, wherever you're working, on your kitchen table, um, in your lap with a uh, watercolor pad or watercolor spiral bound sketchbook, whatever you're using, try to always have a larger working board. You can use masonite or they, they sell these large working boards. You can use foam board even. But if you have a larger board around your paper, this way you can rest your hand over here outside your painting and then come in like this. So it's much easier for me to rest my hand over here to the right where I have a lot of extra masonite board underneath my paper so I can rest my arm down and my hand down and then do this. So you don't want to be like sliding off your paper and you're, you know, you want to always have a large surface underneath your paper so that you can rest your hand. Wherever you're working, you can always rest your hand around your painting, whatever, wherever it is. Try to have extra boards or foam board, whatever it is you have underneath your paper of your watercolor. Try to have extra room to rest your hand so you can rest your hand down and stabilize your, your painting hand, your, you know, your brush. That's all. It's not too, it's not too um, difficult to do that. You just have to maybe try to work that out however you have to do it. And you can see I'm taking my time here and I think what we're going to do is you can see I'm doing my darkest darks here with my branches and my tree trunks following my pencil lines for the most part. And I think what we'll do now is Let's grab our, one more brush we'll use is the needlepoint brush. This needlepoint brush has a great point. You'll see I use this all the time on my channel. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use that needlepoint brush now and pick up some paint. And this way we can get the really fine details here. That's what we need here is some fine details. You can also wait till the we're finished with the sky washes and then go in and do that. And I think that's what we'll do. So here we're just getting some more details with our branches and stuff like that. And then once we're done with the sky washes, we'll leave it like this now. Perfect. We'll leave that like that. And then once we do our sky washes and the sky washes dry, then we'll go over after that and add in the rest of our branches that go up and then out of our painting through the top of the rectangle up here. You can see that. We have branches going all the way up this way. But we want to do our sky wash first and then we'll do our final details here. So we're going to use this needlepoint brush um, toward the end of the painting once our sky washes are completed. But right now we're going to leave this as it is and we'll come back to that later. I'll rinse off my my needlepoint brush. I'll set it down on my table next to me and then we're going to continue on here. And um, you know what? I'm going to take a quick break because we've done quite a bit of work now already. I'm starting to like find myself, my concentration slipping just a little bit. Let me take a break. Is that okay if I take a break? And then I'll get right back with you in just a few minutes and we'll continue painting this. Okay, so I'll be right back and um, we'll get started again. Okay, so we are starting back up again here. As you can see, we're doing the alla prima method. 
Uh, many of you, I know you're already kind of used to hearing either a la prima method or the glazing technique. So here we're doing the a la prima method, painting it all at one time. We're not doing any glazings and letting it dry and blow drying it, anything like that. We're doing a la prima all at one time. We're just going in, drawing the painting, and then going in and painting everything. With the a la prima method, you're basically you're doing your darks first. And uh, I know many of you are used to this a la prima method, so we're just going to keep working that idea. So we've already got our colors here laid out, and we're working our colors here. And we're not going to really um, kind of, you know, depart from those colors that we're using. We're kind of going to stick with our colors, the color scheme that we're using here. We might add something to it, and if we do, we'll remember to add it everywhere. So if you add a different color other than what we've been using so far, you'll just remember to kind of add it in everywhere else so that it kind of just has a harmony to it. You want your painting to have a harmony to it. The thing you want to always avoid, does this make sense? You always want to avoid adding one color at one location in your painting and then you're not adding it anywhere else because it kind of looks out of place. Um, so always remember if you're going to add a little accent color here and there, add it everywhere. Just add it a little touch of it. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit here and there. And I know many of you see me do this all the time on my videos, but even if you're just new to the channel and you're just coming by, I hope you'll just remember that when you're using your colors. Try to mix your colors and harmonize your paintings so that all your colors are always um, being represented everywhere in, in your rectangle. So if you add a little bit of, um, let's say, if you add a little bit of burnt umber down here in your road, you're going to want some burnt umber up here by your house and some burnt umber here in your sky area and your horizon area and your mountain, distant mountain areas, and even a little bit of burnt umber in your clouds maybe or your sky wash. And you'll always notice that. Whenever I do my paintings, I always try to, you know, I try to always practice what I preach, so to speak. Does that make sense? I always try to keep doing the things that I'm, if I'm asking you to do something, I am better make sure I'm doing it myself. And, and I do that. I always make sure that any colors that I have in my painting, I'm repeating them all throughout my painting. I'm never adding one color over here and then not using it other places in my painting. I try to mix it around. Even if it's just a, a little light wash of it somewhere else, the eye will notice that. So someone looking at your painting will notice, ooh, that looks good. Everything's harmonizing, all the same colors throughout the whole painting. All right, so that's a key thing I always try to impress upon everybody. So now we have the house here looking pretty good. The trees are looking pretty good. We're going to add more branches and things toward the end of the painting. But this looks pretty good. Now let's try to do some, uh, let's do some more burnt sienna. And maybe some raw umber. And we're going to try to do some of that in the distant mountains here. This might be kind of, there's still some fall colors here, but yet it's winter time. So we will have a little fall colors here in the distant hills. Maybe it's, maybe it's late or early fall. There's some still fall colors here in the distance. And all of a sudden, just wow, a big snow happens. In the fall time, in the in the in the autumn time, a big snowfall happens, and you have you have some uh, fall colors still in this painting. So let's do those fall colors, and we'll just put them in like so, like that. And that's why we're going to do these fall colors here. So we're doing some burnt um, burnt sienna, raw umber, maybe some even some cadmium orange. Let's put some cadmium orange, some cadmium red. Like that. And we will add these colors into the whole painting. You'll see me do it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do. So now we have our full colors in here. Let's add some of those full colors in here to our road. We're gonna go over this later. But even though we're going to go over this later, I'm going to put some of this preliminary wash here just to kind of have a little bit of that autumn colors there. 
and maybe even a little bit of those autumn colors up here very lightly though see that just ever so slightly but they're there so I have the autumn colors here the autumn colors here we're gonna go over this with a darker wash so you won't see it as pronounced as this so this is the real strong autumn colors here going across the horizon line here in the distant mountain areas now we also added some of those colors to the sky wash and to the foreground here. And a little bit there, too. Ever so slightly, though, here. Ever so slightly up here. Slightly over here. And then a strong, we do a strong autumn colors here. But again, we tied all those autumn colors throughout this composition. And even a little bit of really light there. And that's all we have to remember. We're not, we're going to stick with our game plan. We don't want to drift away from our game plan of what we're doing here. And this here, this is our shadow side of our barn here. And a little bit of golden color, so we want warm and cool. We've got a golden color there. There's snow on this roof over there, so we're going to leave that as it is. And uh, what else do we have here? Okay, we will... Let's start... Let's do our foreground here. So now, we're going to do our road. We have our under painting here a little bit with some light wash of our autumn colors that we see here very strong in the distant hills. Let's do our... Let's start doing our road here. Our road colors, let's use all the colors we used before. We used um, ivory black, pines gray. Uh, we used purple, French ultramarine blue, purple. And then we just go in like that. Look at that. Wow. And a little darker. French Ultramarine Blue. Burn Umber. Burn Sienna. Some of the blacks. Burn Umber. Uh, French Ultramarine. Uh, Pines Gray and Ivory Black. And just let's do that. Get some, just get some really nice flow to it like this perfect look at that then you can go in and do even a little more darks French ultramarine blue no water just straight paint French ultramarine blue burnt umber burnt sienna and then our blacks here too ivory black and pine gray and you just add a couple of little darks here and there like that There we go. Then I will take a little bit of water, add it to this, and do some splashing. Okay, a little bit of splashing in the foreground. Like that. Rinse off the brush. Rinse off the brush, dry it on a piece of paper towel. And then you get some finer splashing, like that. And if you say, oh, I don't like the look of that splash, you take your paper towel and you lift up a little bit. And you lift up some of your splashes so that they look very much less strong and uh, dominant, like that. A little bit of cerulean blue then we take our and we use a little bit of that gray so this is along the side over here just 
scrub on some gray wash here. Maybe you slide some across here like this, but nothing, don't fuss around. Take that gray wash we're using over here, which is a mixture of all these colors, Bur uh, Pines Gray, Ivory Black, a little bit of purple, a little bit of burnt, uh, a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue, some Cobalt Blue maybe a little bit, just that grayish color, and just kind of swing it around a little bit here on this. See how we do that? We just very lightly, just to get some movement, some lines moving through your painting, some shadows. But we want to keep a lot of white paper, so don't cover over your white paper. Just add some shadow lines like I just did here. And then as you do those shadow lines, then you might say, I want to make it more exciting. Add some some blue every every little bit. Add some blue there. Cool. Snow colors. Blot it up if it's too much. Blot it up a little bit like that like that. Then some green. Sap green over here, some olive green. Add some of that sap green and olive green over here, over here. Add, and then again, if we're adding sap green and olive green to a little bit of spots here and there for some foliage, Add some of that over here. Definitely add it over here. Add a little bit of green, just a little tiny touch. That's going to make a big difference. Greens here and here and here. Add a little bit there. Add some over here and then in the distant hills over here. Add some of that green. Like that. And then a little bit here, just a touch. That's all you have to do. Okay, that's all. Just, you know, again, we're always saying add your colors throughout your painting to harmonize everything. Looks much better. So we did add a little green here for the bushes, a little bit of green bushes over here, and some um, branches and twigs and some green weeds and grasses, maybe. We added a little touch of green up there and we maybe just took some uh, tissue or some paper towel and just kind of minimized it even a, a little more, but we d it's still there. That green color is still up there. Over here we added some green in the distant mountains. You can lift it up a little bit there, but remember, add it everywhere you go. So if you add a little bit of green, add it everywhere and then you're all set. So you can kind of see I'm working my colors all the way through my painting. If I add something new, if I add a new color, I add it everywhere, maybe just a little tiny touch of it, but I still do it. And you can see how we do that. Very simple. Okay, so here we do a little, we kind of just mix, mix up a little gray and we just do a little, we do a little of this, just a little bit of some wiggle, wiggly lines like that for shadows. And then it's about time for a break. We've done a lot so far now. So we're really about halfway through our painting. We've got a lot of paint on our paper now. Again, we're leaving a lot of white paper on this painting. So you're going to see when we're done, there's a lot of white paper. And those of you that watched in the, you know, if you clicked on the video and you watched it right from the beginning, you saw this finished painting already, so you kind of know what it's going to look like, you know, when it's finished, but we do leave a lot of white paper on this painting, so we're, we're halfway through painting and we pretty much have most of the paint on the paper now. We just have a little more to do, some sky washes and a few more darks in the distant mountains here, and then that's going to be about it. So you will see that we definitely... Um, have made a lot of headway here so far and then I'll just add some shadow colors to the side of this house and again the the lights coming from behind us so this house is going to be in shadow so we are adding some shadow to the house right here right now and a little bit of the blue for the shadow there and then warm and cool a little bit of a little bit of the orange and 
colors like that in this too. We don't want to just... And that's about it. And all I did here was just add a very light wash like this. You can see how light that is. That's not dark. So obviously a dark wash looks like this with lots of paint, not much water. For our house here, the, the, the side of our house here on this, on this area here, we used a light wash like this. Very little paint, more water to get that shadow feel. So that's a, a big help for you if you just remember on the house side over here, on this side of the house, it's a very light shadow color like that. A mixture of the blues and the and the golds like this and I did a little bit of everything and that will dry lighter too but that's what we want to have here and then everything else we're leaving pretty much white paper and we'll do some dark washes in the blue sky here and I think we're gonna have it pretty much completed everything so let's come back let's take a quick is it okay if I take a quick break I'm hoping it's okay because in just a second we're going to come back and we're going to finish up this painting with the sky washes and maybe a couple details with the trees and the tree branches and limbs over here. But then I think at that point we will have a finished painting, maybe some more branches and details over here and over here in the foreground. But other than that, we're going to have pretty much a really good finished painting and I'll maybe do a few figures here along the house too. But um, hope you're having a great time. We're having a fun time. We're not, we are having a great time aren't we so let's uh, continue let's uh, take a break take breaks when you can so this way you don't get too fatigued and tired and stressed you take breaks maybe you take a 10 15 minute break or you maybe you're going to take a um, break and have some dinner and you come back after dinner and start working on your painting again whatever you like to do you create your own break times as you need to but it is it is good to take breaks so i'm going to take a break now and then come back and we'll we'll continue to do the rest of our um washes here in the sky and a few more details in the branches of the trees and the twigs and the branches over here on this bush and tree over here and I think we're gonna have everything and then a couple little figures over here we'll do along the house this is like a barn scene so this is like a farm countryside farm area beautiful snow a winter snow scene and um, we're gonna make it really cool with some blue sky here and um, you'll see it's gonna look fantastic so Let's get ready, take a break, and we'll come back. We'll be all charged up to do our next um, next bit of washes in the sky. Okay, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Wow, we're almost completed with this painting. And it's not a very simple painting or a small painting. This is a good size painting. This is like a 12 by 16 uh, style painting here, you know, a, a larger style. Let's take a look here. Let's see what we have. This is a uh, 10 or a 9 by a 9 by uh, 13. So a 9 by 13 medium size painting here, you know, small to medium size painting. So it is, um, you know, a, a good size painting. A lot of times here on my channel we do smaller compositions, but this one's a pretty good size. And um, we're having a lots, lots of fun here, and um, so let's let's kind of finish things up here. Um, you can, at this point, pretty much, you have all of your colors already in your painting. So all the colors we've used so far, we're not going to be adding anything new. So you've kind of kept track of the colors. Now we're just going to go in and we're going to use some French ultramarine blue. Here, French ultramarine blue and some cobalt blue. And then we'll use some grayish colors here too. So we'll mix in some Pines Gray and uh, Ivory Black for some grayish tones. And then also some warmer colors, some raw umber here. So we're going to put some raw umber up here mixed in with some of the green so we don't have to worry too much. We
and we just had a little bit of a, a local warning here of a um, snowstorm and uh, that's no worries so my phone was kind of ringing a little bit here and um, but let's uh, French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue and then a little bit of that grayish uh, pines gray and ivory black there just so we have a little grayish mixture with our sky tone colors all right, so let's do this now. Let's kind of get our sky washes in. And then we're just doing this. We're just taking our brush, loading it with some paint, and we're just doing this. We're just sliding it across the painting, like so. Like that. Slide it across. Very loosely like that, and then you're all set. Then you might want to you take a little bit of French ultramarine blue and maybe some of this raw umber maybe, right? A little bit of that. And then you just add some darker darks here and there. So that you have a little bit of variation in that, right? You don't want to just have all plain one tone, tonal value. You want to break up your tonal values. So maybe you go in and you do a little bit of that. You add in some some darker wash like that with some straight paint. Straight French ultramarine blue for that dark. Okay. And then you can... Sometimes you can take a little bit of paper towel or tissue and just soften up the uh, over here. As it's going out to the corner of your painting, you can do a little take a little paper towel and just kind of soften that up a little bit because the outside borders of your painting are not so important. It's more important the central areas of your, your painting. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. And then uh, again, some more Pines Gray and uh, Ivory Black over here. And then maybe we're going to go with some some more clouds over here and Blue Sky like that. So this is the more of the... We soften it up over here toward the edges. And that looks pretty good. Then maybe a little purple. And these are the purple mountains in the distance. Purple mountains in the distance, and then we have some darker darks. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. Like that. Okay, and then we leave that gorgeous snowy areas back there. Maybe not there though. And then maybe I'll lift up a little bit of paint like that. And then if you want, you can always take your paper towels and you just fold them up and make them into a sort of like a nice sharp point. Your paper towel, you can make it to a, a point like that. And then you can do a little... And you can give yourself some layers there. So you can have some layers of mountains like that. And that looks pretty good. Gives you some more dynamics to your and I just rinse my brush and add a little couple of gray areas here, some bluish gray. Um, like that. 
some mystery shadows. A little bit of warm and cool. So I add some warm and cool there. Like that. And we have some more warm and cool over here. So along this barn here, let's get some raw umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. And then we're just going to do this. And this is a little more, just some more added details. Like that. And then we're going to move over again. At this point, I'm starting to see my water is getting a little murky in my water bucket. Let me change my water. Fresh water. I use my fresh water. This is an orange juice container. I drink lots of water. Uh, orange juice. It's got vitamin C. Very healthy orange juice. I drink a lot of orange juice. So fresh water and then I'm going to go back in and get some more Pines Gray, um, Ivory Black and a little bit of the blue, a grayish mixture there. Maybe a little more warmish. Add some more raw umber. And then we'll do this. We'll go across like that. Then I add some damp brush. And some damp brush with a little bit of that mixture of raw umber up there. A little bit of blue. Lots of water. Let that water flow around your painting. Always remember that you're doing watercolors. It's, it's to your absolute advantage that you use lots of water. And then to just add some darks. Works good. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. And then I just do that. Add a little bit of a darker wash there. That gives it more of a powerful coming across here like this with that darker wash. You just go over with a darker wash. If you see it's too light, get in that little extra bit of French ultramarine blue. Like that. If you have to blot up a little bit over here, you can do that. Blot up a little bit there. Like that. Have some dark passages with powerful darks. You don't want to have... Um, you want to have lots of darks and lots of really light washes and even white paper. So leave lots of white paper get some really good darks in your sky, some, you know, really dark French ultramarine blue mixed in with some raw umber, mixing some, you know, dark uh, or some warmer colors, warm and cool all the time. If you're make, mixing a blue for this dark blue passage here in the sky, make sure you add some raw umber to it so you have warm and cool in there. And then over here you have we had some dark blue. We had some dark blue over here too. Let's do that. A couple of dark splotches of color there. Maybe a little bit over here. Could always blot up a little bit if you need to but I think that looks good so we are really having a great time here and we've got pretty much everything um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry as we're going let's get some
Ivory Black, Payne's Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, maybe a little bit of Sap Green too. And we kind of have that nice And then we're just going to use our needlepoint brush here that we use all the time on my channel. You see me use this all the time. And we're just going to do this. We're just going to add some... We're just taking them and just wisping on the free, fun branches here. You're not trying to create a masterpiece. Just flick on the branches. Maybe these go a couple to go this way over here, but most of them are going this way. Most of them are flowing this way. But then you always have once in a while a couple of them go the other way. Like that. And there we go. Good. And then this here too. We're going to get some branches down here too. Like that. And we have some of that green paint that we put down here. Some of that green sap green and ivory uh, or sap green and um, olive green so we have some of that here too just a couple bits of green wash in the foreground that looks good now we're going to take those same colors and we're going to do some branches and things over here by this and then we're going to go right over into that house look at that that really looks good when you kind of can take some of those branches and just sort of tie it in with the, like that, with the house here on the left. And then we're going up here like so. This here you're going to let dry 100% before you go in and do your final branches up in the sky because we just did a beautiful sky wash here. And when you do that sky wash, you have to let that dry 100% before you go back in and do your branches. So let that dry over here before you do your final branches up here with your needlepoint brush. That's the main thing. So we're going to let this dry up here 100%, which means either you have to use a blow dryer or you have to come back like two hours later and let it dry. So I leave that up to you. Yours, the artist, you're smart. You know what you're going to do before I even know what you're going to do. You know what you're going to do. And there we have it. But you can kind of see how we really have worked around this painting and with the Alla Prima method and we've really gotten a great look to this painting. I can add a couple darks here and there like so and um, maybe a little bit of blue and grays over here And as you can see, this is a really fun painting to do, and it's really all about the flow of the lines of the painting, the design. And when you see that design, you just know it looks great. It's got a beautiful flow to it. And uh, Just adding some shadows there to that barn over here. And um, we're going to do a couple of... Again, we have to let this dry up here before the top section here where the sky is. We have to let this dry 100% before we do the branches of the trees going up through to the top of the uh, rectangle here, the top of our picture frame. But we can still do... Look at this. We can still do these beautiful fence posts. Let's do those. And just bang, you know, bang them in there. Look at that. Look at that. That's all. Fence posts. Perfect. Our fence posts are in there. And we can have a couple more over here. Like that. Maybe a few more here. If you add some details to your painting, you're going to notice they really look good. So 
some figures. Let's do some figures here. There we go. A couple of figures along the, the building over here. They're working along the side of the... There's some people here at the farm. They're working. You could add a little bit of cadmium red. Maybe there's some... You could add some exciting colors here. Maybe some cadmium orange. So you have some figures working around here. This is the... If you feel it's too much paint, you can always lift up a little bit. So we really have had a lot of fun here. Let's do some some greens. I just uh, go in with some olive green, some sap green, raw umber. Get a little bit of a green, dry off the brush. So I dry off the brush a little bit. Get some green on the brush, dry it off a little bit so it's not too much paint. And just do some that's all just some quick scrubs of color uh, some green maybe a little bit of grayish colors in the green so you get some grayish colors in there too maybe some splashes do a couple splashes in there like that a couple splashes will look good and I usually scratch out a couple lights. Okay, let's take a break. The only thing we have left to do is a couple more details with our tree over here, our tree limbs and tree branches to give us a, a more sense of the house being closer to us and the far distance of the sky. So we want to create three-dimensional um, dynamics in our painting. So to create that three-dimensional dynamics in our painting, we need to make sure that we let this sky wash here with these dark blues and purples and raw umbers mixed into the sky wash. We added a lot of water to that. Does this make sense? Let this dry 100% before you go in and do some dark uh, tree branches and tree limbs going all the way up through the top of the painting, like so, all the way up through. And that's going to give you your three-dimensional feel. So you're going to have the trees and the branches closer to us and then the far sky all the way in the distance. So that's why we have to let this dry 100% and then we can get our tree branches in here and tree limbs. And then once we, once we do that, it'll, it'll look absolutely phenomenal. And then we'll have the whole painting perfect. It'll be set um, and you will see that uh, it's going to look phenomenal. You'll have another great painting under your belt. Okay, so let's uh, let this dry 100% up here. You can blow dry this if you want or let it dry for a couple hours. Uh, I'm going to blow dry it and I'll come back in like 5-10 minutes, okay? Alright, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Alright everybody, we are actually coming to a finish here with our painting. We've had a really a fun time creating this painting. Yes, it's been a, a, a few um, twists and turns and um, some, you know, we've had to take our time figuring out all the different uh, methods and techniques we're going to use and the colors we're going to use and the different uh, design principles we're going to use for this painting but overall once we're done with this finished product we can see that it really does um, have a beautiful powerful impactful um, 
overall look to this. And so if you're painting this even in a more simplistic um, style, maybe you're not going to have as much detail as this, but if you get those design principles of the really powerful, impactful lines going through your painting across the sky, the, the distant mountains, the hills, the snow drifts here, the road going in this way. If you can get that flow going through your painting like this, if you can get that idea, you're really going to have a beautiful painting no matter how sophisticated or how many colors you use, whatever it is, you're still going to have a, an excellent painting happening for yourself. So that's my main thing. I'm really excited that you're going to have a great painting when you're done with this. Um, so we're pretty much completed. We wanted to uh, use our um, needlepoint brush here with our darker darks. So we're using ivory black, Payne's gray, burnt umber, some sap green. We're just going to use some darker darks, maybe some uh, French ultramarine blue as well, and some um, what else did we want to use there? Um, purple, a little bit of purple in there. Ultramarine violet. And then when we load up our brush with um, darks for our branches, we just remember we load up our brush, our needlepoint brush, and then we dry off just a little bit on a tissue so that we don't have too much paint on there. And then we can get those fine lines that we're looking for. And that's what we're looking for here. Maybe we can go with a little bit of a darker line like so. So yeah, we can do that. So we just go in here and then we just do And we're going to show you how to um, we're going to do some more paint, uh, trees over here, and let's do a couple over here. And these are going to set back the sky. So when you do these beautiful branches and limbs and trees in the front here, like this, alongside the house on this side over here. Um, you're going to definitely see a big uh, difference here. And that's what we're doing. We're going to do some more tree limbs over here. So I load up my brush with my needlepoint brush here, load it up with lots of color, lots of darks, and we're just going to do that. And as you can see, the more you add a few of these trees, but not too many, that's the key. Let's not add too many that we uh, wind up going way too much with details. Again, I load my brush up, my needlepoint brush up, tap a little bit of that paint off. You don't want too thick a paint, so you want to make sure you're, you'd rather go with a little less paint than too much and then make it really... These need to be very thin, like that. You can kind of see, like that. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing some very fine lines like that. And then the icing on the cake, as we say. But before we do the icing on the cake, let's rinse off our brush, 
we're going to get a little bit of grayish blue here, just a tiny bit. And we're going to go along the top of this. Um, this barn over here, on the left side over here, we want to kind of accentuate that that's a barn and that there's there's snow on that roof. So to, to accentuate the snow on the roof of that barn, we add a little bit of light wash. As you can see that I just did of the like a little bit of a grayish blue. And there and there we have it. Now that pops out and it looks a little better. Because we have that white paper and then a little bit of a light wash of blue on top with a little bit of the raw umber. So a little bit of warm and cool. You can even add some green to that. And that looks good. So we've added the details after drying the paper with our blow dryer. We added the details of the branches and the trees and the tree limbs. Now the last thing we can do again for the icing on the cake, as I say, is we take some titanium white with a little bit of a little bit of yellow ochre. You mix in a little bit of yellow ochre with your titanium white in the top of the tube of your paint like that and then you can do a little bit of just a touch to get some of those vertical lines like that through the distant hills because you wanted to does that does that look good you have to decide tell me on your side of the on your side of things does this look good if I add a little bit of titanium white with a little bit of touch of yellow ochre to the branches and the tree limbs and the tree trunks does that look good and if it does you'll comment in the comment section yes Chris that looks good I agree or no I don't I don't think that looks good so if we can get a little bit of a couple of white highlights I think that looks better and that looks good. I think we're all set here. You might want to do a few more French ultramarine blue, Payne's gray, ivory black, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, purple. Get a whole bunch of darks in there. Then you dry off a little bit of the darks like here on the paper towel or tissue just so you don't go too dark. And then we do a dark fence post here. And we'll do another one up here. Now this will... There you go. If you have a little bit of an issue, you can fix that with white paint, actually. With the uh, titanium white, you can fix that. So you can do this. This will give you even more depth in your painting. And then if you have an issue where you added too much paint to a section, No one will ever see that. There we go. And then we can add a little shadows. Lights coming from the back this way. We can do this. We can add a little bit of shadows like this, pretending that we're painting into the light. We're painting into the light. So we have a little shadowing. So I'm just going to add some shadows here just to the 
to the house here. And uh, the trees. And that's what I'm doing is just actually adding a little bit of shadowing to the picture, to the painting here, just so. And that can actually add a lot of uh, impact to your painting if you try to get your um, shadows. So we can get our shadows looking pretty good here. And I think if you do that, if you add a little bit of shadows, and maybe this is a little thicker there. There we go. Okay, we are now complete. You've seen that I've taken all of my painting and then kept on working it until I was getting to my final details where I added a little bit of white paint to highlight some areas um, for the tree shadows and additional um, tree branches, tree twigs up top here. I think this has the overall idea of things that make it look like a, a really good painting. I will do maybe a few more highlights, maybe on the roof area here. So maybe I'll do another, maybe a little bit of, like that, maybe a little bit of, And maybe we'll do even a little bit of an orange clay kind of color. Orange and uh, burnt sienna. Cadmium red. Maybe we'll do a little clay. Clay chimney pot here. Like that. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Again, maybe a couple little spots too we could do. But the thing is not to go too crazy with details. I think those details are good enough at the way it is now. Sparingly is the key. If you're doing details, use them, you know, use them sparingly. If you're going to use some titanium white with a little yellow ochre here and there for some of the trees where you want to kind of um, make sure you carry through the branches on your trees so that you're seeing the trees closer to you and the darker darks in the back for the distant mountains you have to maybe do a little bit of the little bit of the light titanium white with yellow ochre just to give you the feeling that you can see the trees closer and the distance of the the hills in the background that that helps a lot that helped us a lot by doing that adding the the titanium white with yellow ochre mixed in there a little bit and uh, other than that we just added a few more details of shadows on the trees and these fence posts, we added additional fence posts here in the foreground to make it feel like you're walking into the scene or driving into the scene and you're going through everything. And as we talked about before in the beginning of the video, you know, the, the powerful design of this painting is really the key to it. And I'm sure you're going to have a great time painting this. So 
absolutely have a great time enjoy and um we'll see you on the next video and again please if you haven't subscribed right on the right hand side below there is the subscribe button if you want to keep uh, learning about watercolor all the methods and te techniques of watercolor just keep coming by our our site here our channel and um, we're going to keep we're all together here working together painting these beautiful paintings and going over the same methods and techniques over and over until we really are able to create beautiful paintings because we've understood that we're repeating over and over the same methods and techniques um, to get these results that we need, that we want for our watercolors. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate everyone's uh, very kind and uh, generous comments in the comments section. Um, I appreciate every one of you and thank you for coming by on my channel and watching our watercolors here as we work together. And I'm sure that um, in the future you're going to see uh, week by week, month, month by month, and year by year, your watercolor paintings are going to get better. You're going to have more fun and more excitement painting in watercolor because you're learning the fundamentals of watercolor. Okay, so um, we'll see you on the next video, everybody. Okay, happy painting.